Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, from myself, Alex, and welcome to today's IELTS analysis class, where I will be looking at a task that was posted in the Facebook group, and I'll be going through the answers to the task, and also looking at some issues surrounding the relevance of the task to the IELTS exam. So if you are watching this class live, then very welcome to you. And please let me know in the chat box your name and where, you, where you're from or where you currently are. And, uh, and also, please do participate as well throughout the class in order to answer the questions which I will be posing as um, I move on to look at the task and the answers related to it. Um, so let's have a, uh, a look then at the material that we will be uh, reviewing today and let's see how this links to the IELTS task that was posted in the um, Swoosh Kinetics Facebook group. Okay, so just as I'm loading this, I can see uh, Jay Sri, hello to you. Thanks for uh, letting me know you're watching in the comments um, from Abu Dhabi. Great to see you in the class again. I can see Joy is in the class as well. Hello to you, uh, Joy from Nigeria. Great to see you. I should say, of course, I am at the moment in the UK. Um, so great to see you from, from these different countries around the world. Okay. So we're focusing on using idiomatic language. That's the, the task that you were looking at, and that will be the main focus of today's class. So first of all, let's have a look at vocabulary in general and what you are expected to produce in the IELTS in order to produce a high level of vocabulary that will see you score um, at a good level in the exam. So the point is, is that in order to score highly in the writing and the, and the speaking section of the IELTS exam, you should be using both accurate and varied vocabulary. So what do we mean by using accurate and varied vocabulary? Well, the first point is, is that the vocabulary we use should be correct, of course. And one example of this is that we use the right combinations of words. These are also known as collocations. And an example of this is to have a party. So using the correct verb have with the noun party. Another example would be make a mistake. Again, using the correct verb make, in this case, with the noun mistake. If we were to say or write to do a party uh, or to have a mistake, that would be incorrect. So we need to make sure that we're using the correct combination of words. Um, we should also use standard vocabulary for the IELTS. So an example here is that we would say that he's very small, not he's teeny. So teeny is a very sort of informal, non-standard word that exists in English. But of course, we, we should be using standard vocabulary for the um, writing and, and speaking sections of the exam. Naturally, we need to ensure that we are pronouncing words correctly. Uh, that's a part of... Um, producing accurate vocabulary if, uh, if we're speaking. If we're writing, then of course we need to make sure that we spell the words correctly. Um, we want to avoid repetition of vocabulary as well. That's how we can use variety, by not just repeating the same words and expressions. And one way that we can avoid repetition is to use less common vocabulary items. And that's what takes us on to using idioms. I want to make the point here that idioms are much more um, appropriate in speaking um, in comparison to writing. We can use idiomatic language in writing, but it's not seen as being academic, so we should avoid it for the IELTS. But for the speaking section, then using idioms is a great way to use less common vocabulary. So I can see that uh, Shine has joined us in the class. Hello to you, Shine. Shirlene as well from India, a very warm welcome to you. Uh, and Alice has joined the class as well. Welcome to you, Alice. Great to see you in the class again. So moving on to focus more specifically on idioms. If we're going to use idiomatic language effectively, we need to ensure that we are, first of all, using the correct expression. So sometimes I hear 
um, when people are using idiomatic language that they get the expression slightly wrong. We want to make sure we don't do this because if we if we get it wrong, obviously we'll lose the credit for it in terms of using more varied vocabulary. So an example here is if you're very frustrated about something, you would say, I was pulling my hair out, not I was pulling my hair off. So just that change of preposition goes from a correct idiom to something that doesn't make sense within the context that you're trying to use it. So of course, we must make sure that if we're using idioms that we, we're confident that we're using them correctly. We also must make sure that we're using the expression in an appropriate context. So um, one example of appropriate context is that we use it in speaking, not writing, as previously mentioned, but also to make sure that we've got the meaning correct. So again, going back to that idiom, I was pulling my hair out, we should only use that idiom if we're expressing frustration or desperation of some sort um, and not use it to say that we were tired, for example. So we must make sure we use it um, in the appropriate context um, to communicate the correct meaning. Don't overuse the expression. So uh, if you're using the expression in speaking, it's an expression that you would only use once, generally speaking. You wouldn't keep repeating an idiom throughout because it sounds very unnatural if you do that. So you'd use it once. And another way to, to use it appropriately and effectively is to use appropriate intonation and stress. So again, going back to that um, idiom, I was pulling my hair out, you wouldn't say, oh, so I was really frustrated and I was pulling my hair out. No, you would say it with emphasis because using idioms generally, we're using them to emphasize a particular situation. So it would say something like, I was pulling my hair out. So a real stress on hair um, and also a, a, a rising intonation there to show emphasis in your expression. So these are all ways that we can use idiomatic language effectively for the IELTS. So let's have a look at the task now. And here we have a range of idioms which are all connected to energy. So if you completed the task or if you're looking at the task with me now, let me know what you think the answers should be. <clears throat> um, I can just see that Chazzy and Cheryl have joined us in the class as well. So welcome to both of you. And let's see then. Let's see if we can match the meanings to each of these idioms. So first of all, we have Robert is a bright spark. He'll know the capital of Mongolia. Okay, so let's see. Can we get that answer correct? If anyone has a suggestion in terms of A, B, C, D, E, F, or G, please let me know. And uh, we will see if you've got the answers correct. So let me know what you think. So Jayshri is suggesting F for a bright spark, an intelligent person. Takes one to know one, right? Okay. Yep, I wholeheartedly agree. Definitely F for that one. A bright spark is an intelligent person. Um, so the answer for this one would be F. So this is quite a common idiom that is used, um, and so it would be a good one to use, obviously, in the appropriate context in the IELTS exam. What about number two? Andrea's full of beans this morning. What do we think about this one? What's the correct definition of full of beans? So again, let me know in the chat if you think you know the answer. Okay. So, suggestion of D from Shine. J3 is saying C. Any other suggestions? Romy, C as well. Okay. Yeah, I agree. C is the answer. So, if you're full of beans, you have a lot of energy. So that's another nice expression that you can use in the exam. Um, number three, do you really think we can sell our cars in Japan? It's like taking coal to Newcastle. So a less common expression here, but what do we think this means?
any suggestions? Like taking coal to Newcastle. Look at the context of the sentence, because that will help you to get the answer. Do you really think we can sell our cars in Japan? Okay, so G is being suggested, and I absolutely agree. Yeah, it's like taking coal to Newcastle. The whole point is, is that in Newcastle, they already have a lot of coal, so they don't need it. Um, so, so that would be the answer to that one. Supplying something where it's not needed. Okay, what about number four? After a tough day at work in the office, Ruth loves to let off steam with a game of, squ of squash. What does it mean to let off steam? That might be an expression you've heard before, quite a common one, that one. To let off steam. Okay, so Romy is suggesting A for that one. Do we agree? Any other suggestions? Yep, so <clears throat> absolutely, I do agree. So to let off steam, to release nervous energy is the answer. And you can do that with a game of squash. Uh, number five, there are six months before my IELTS test. So from now on, it's full steam ahead. Full steam ahead. Which of the options do we think is the best definition? OK, so Alice, you should be able to make the text much bigger. If you just click on full screen, there should be an option on the right side of the screen that you can click on, um, depending on where you're watching the class. But yeah, if you can make the, the, the screen full screen, then that should make the, the text larger. OK, so what do we think? Full steam ahead. Yeah, we've got the suggestion of B. Romy Shine, Jay Sri, Ruchi, Joy Good, everyone's saying B. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so full state, steam ahead, obviously time to go on, on top speed, which means it's time to give it everything. Yeah, to put in all of your effort, to put in all of your energy in order to achieve your goal. Um, number six, Steffi's been burning the midnight oil for the last two weeks. So we've got two options here, D or E. Which one do you think is correct? Okay, so Shine suggesting D. Do we agree? Yep, Ruchi is saying D. Okay, good. Absolutely. D is the correct answer. If you're burning the midnight oil, then you are working late at night. And so finally, Derek is already in a bad mood. Don't tell him about the broken photocopier right now. That will just be adding fuel to the fire. <clears throat> so there's only one option left for that one, isn't there? So it must be E. If you add fuel to the fire, you make a bad situation worse. So these are some common idioms that you can use in your speaking. And if you are able to use them effectively, that is accurately and appropriately, then you will get credit for that in the exam. So um, see, yeah, Jayshri is saying for burning the midnight oil, yeah, staying awake all night, absolutely. Um, fuel to the fire. Bad situation, worse. Yep. Fantastic. So some great suggestions there. Um, so well done for your answers and for your participation in the task. Um, just a quick reminder in relation to using idioms is that if you are able to do so, then that is a really good way of improving your vocabulary score for the IELTS exam. And yeah, and that's a great way because that's 25% of your speaking. That's a great way to step up in your IELTS speaking. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Okay, so um, 
thank you again for all of your participation. It just re remains now for me to um, let you know that if you've found this class useful and if you want to take advantage of a great opportunity that exists, then I want to let you know about the program that we have, the scholarship program, which exists um, as a partnership between ourselves at Swoosh English and also the USA's largest healthcare recru recruiter, uh, which is Kinetics USA. You can apply for the scholarship by clicking on the link, which I'll be sharing in the chat, and you can sign up for that today. So I'm going to share this link in the chat with you now if you would like to take advantage of this fantastic opportunity. All you have to do is click on it and um, you will be able to um, find out more information and really move forward in terms of your dreams of living and working in the USA. Uh, so you should be able to see that in the chat box now. Okay, so do have a look at that link. Um, but that now brings us to the end of today's class. So thank you once again for all those who've participated and for those who have been watching live. And if you do want to take an opportunity, which we are offering with the scholarship program, then make sure you click on that link to do so. The next class will be on Thursday. So I will see you then. Until then, take care. <laughs>